All right, everybody, let's make ketivore slash potentially carnivore lasagna. I wanted to make something special for my family for Valentine's Day that had hearts on it and was romantically pasta y delicious, but without using real pasta and keeping it somewhat in the spectrum of what I try to feed them in general. So that's what we're going to make today. We're going to start our process for making our ketivore lasagna today with making the noodles. This is probably the most important part that we want to get right. And so I went over to Anita's channel, Ketogenic Woman, and followed her recipe for carnivore noodles. There's several different ones out there, so you can choose whichever recipe you like best. And you'll see here we're making a double batch of this noodle recipe. So I will post in the description the single batch recipe, which is what you will actually technically need to make the size lasagna that we're making in the video. And you'll see why I doubled it as we move along. My intention was to actually make ravioli starting out here. So I thought I was gonna need a lot more noodles, but it ended up working out great. And I had extra noodles to make other dishes with afterwards. So no matter if you keep it the single batch or the double batch, I feel like you win. But here we're adding six tablespoons of the Porking Good unflavored pork rinds, along with two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. Next, we have eight tablespoons of full fat cream cheese. And we're going to add six eggs to complete our double batch of noodle mixture. Next, we'll start whisking that up until it is combined. And then we're gonna bring in our stick blender to really get this all blended up into the batter form. So it's going to be pretty liquidy but that's how you want it. You could throw this in a blender or a food processor, just anything that'll get it nice and smooth. While we clean up our mess together, we're also preheating our oven to 350 degrees, getting out a large cookie sheet and our silicone baking mat that we're gonna put our batter onto in order to bake these in the oven and then create our noodles. So we'll set up our cookie sheet and silicone baking mat, and then begin to pour this batter nice and easy onto the baking mat, allowing it to spread out a little bit. We want a pretty thin layer, but we don't wanna go over the edges of our baking mat, obviously. So here it's helpful to have a like a frosting spreader, or you can go ahead and bend a spoon with your mind like I did and use that as your makeshift batter spreader. Just trying to get as close to a rectangle shape as you possibly can. Once it's good, we'll pop this into our preheated oven for anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. This is per Anita's recipe. I think she said hers ended up being about 10 minutes. So that's what we did. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start creating my filling or the meat and cheese layering that's gonna be a part of this lasagna. So my original idea was to make ravioli, which you're gonna see me attempt to do a little bit here, but uh, that didn't end up working out. And so we are going to make this into lasagna today. I'm just kind of using leftovers of things that I had in my fridge. So this is about five ounces of pre-cooked. This is uh, ground beef, 73% that I've already cooked that was just left over in the fridge. And so I'm just breaking this up into small chunks and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a cutting board and chop it up really as fine as I can get it because I want it to be very, very, very fine so that it spreads out nice and evenly when I put this on top of the carnivore noodles. Next, I'm gonna add some shredded mozzarella cheese. This is about a cup, three quarters of a cup to a cup. Again, I'm sort of eyeballing all of this. so. Just um, use what looks about the right amount to you. But again, I would say this is about a cup of cheese and I'm just kind of incorporating that until it looks like it's a good ratio to me. And our noodles 
have finished baking so we're gonna pull those out and take a look and yes the edges are starting to rise lift off of the silicone mat and they're just slightly turning brown around the edges which is what I learned from Anita is the sign to look for Okay, let's add a few seasonings to our filling in between baking batches of noodles. I've added some garlic powder, a little bit of salt, some minced dried onion, and some oregano. Just mixing that all together. Again, if you're doing this carnivore, you can omit these seasonings or substitute for anything that you do like and can tolerate. Now that our first batch of noodles has cooled down a little bit, we can easily lift it off the baking mat and put it onto the cutting board where we will cut them into our noodle shapes. But first let's get the rest of the noodle batter into the oven. So again, just pouring it onto the silicone lined baking sheet and spreading it out with that mind bended spoon until it's nice and rectangular even and free from any big lumps. We'll go ahead and put that one in the oven now for about the same time. This one I felt like was just a smidge thicker than the one before it and so I put it on for 11 minutes and it ended up being perfect. So here's the part where I thought I was going to make heart-shaped ravioli and so I got super excited about cutting all these noodles from my first batch into heart shapes. However, after some trial and error with a couple of different methods that I thought would work to bind these already cooked egg noodles together failed, I decided to just go ahead and make lasagna. They are still gonna come in handy for the finished product and the rest of them got recycled into other noodle forms, so nothing got wasted. But let's move on and cut our second batch of noodles into the lasagna form. So all I'm gonna do is just slice one noodle nice and thick to about the thickness that I think will work and then use that one as a pattern to continue to cut the rest of the noodles to approximately the same thickness. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my brick of cream cheese, which is about four ounces to my filling mixture along with a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, just to give this a little bit more of that cheesy spreadable lasagna type texture. The best pan that I had to use for this was my meatloaf pan. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that today. And perhaps I cut my noodles a little bit too thick for this pan size, but hey, we're just kind of winging it today. We're eyeballing the stuff and it's gonna be good. So I'm gonna start with a layer of my carnivore lasagna noodles and then move into spreading some of the filling onto the top for our first layer. I'm gonna be using this pasta sauce. It's ragu simply traditional sauce with eight ingredients. They're all whole food ingredients, no weird additives or sugar added. So I was excited to find that at Walmart and I'm sure you can find it probably at most grocery stores. That's what I'm gonna be using about a half of a cup, I would say per layer over our mixture. And then I'll just continue to layer our carnivore lasagna noodles, cutting them to size as we go. And then layering more of the meat and cheese mixture and our pasta sauce. Now, if you're making this as a carnivore, you can omit this bread pasta sauce and substitute a carnivore Alfredo sauce, or again, just leave it sauceless and it'll still be delicious. Since my original intention was to make heart-shaped ravioli and I kind of experimented with half of the batch of my noodles, I'm glad that I made the double batch because that provided me with just enough using my little cutout pieces 
to make this size lasagna in this meatloaf pan. However, if you make the double batch recipe like I did, you'll have plenty of noodles to make a larger lasagna in a larger pan. You would just need then to use more of your sauce and make more of your meat and cheese filling to layer your lasagna. So again, I kind of just eyeballed this whole recipe. I will leave some approximations for measuring out what you would need in the description of the video, but this is kind of fun to just go with what you have. You could use chicken in this, you could use ground turkey, you could use leftover, really any kind of meats. You could even throw some bacon in here. So you can definitely get creative with your filling. But since it's Valentine's Day, I wanted to make sure there were hearts on top of this. So I did use two of the carnivore noodle hearts that I cut out earlier to top this lasagna. And I thought it was really cute. So let's put this in the oven now. It's ready to bake. And since everything in this lasagna is already pre-cooked, um, I'm just going to put this in at 375 degrees for about 25 minutes just to get everything nice and heated through, get that cheese bubbling a little bit on the top. And it turned out really, really pretty and really, really delicious. My little one absolutely devoured this. I even ate about half of her piece here because I had to try some. I know, naughty, right? It feels like you're cheating. I swear it's so delicious and you can't even tell that these are not real noodles. So I'm extremely happy with this recipe. What do you think of the lasagna? It's good. You like it? Mm-hmm. Is your mouth full? Mm-mm. And since everybody liked it so much, I plan to make this much more often and incorporate this into my meal planning for the future. So what do you guys think? Are you going to try this recipe? Let me know below. Have a very happy Valentine's Day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Woo! In our big bowl. Now I'm going to fill the bowl with three tins. One. With, with six tables. Six tablespoons of pork rind. A tablespoon, six tablespoons, seven tablespoons. <gasps> it's a good one. It's starting, starting to get look messy. Mm. Now we need to add the eggs. Okay. You have six eggs to crack. Can I do it? Crack some? Yeah, I want that. 